Yes, Semper Fi 1918, and if you are a new person that's just getting into eBay sales and all that stuff, or even selling on Poshmark and other sites, there's a few things that I'd give you uh, as far as advice goes. I've been selling for a couple of years, and am I making thousands and thousands of dollars a month? No. But uh, what I can tell you of what I've learned so far is, number one, don't be going out and buying thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff right away. Start with what you got in your house and start building up from there that way. Is it going to take time? Yes. Is it going to be overnight success? No. There's people who have been doing it for 20 plus years and guess what? They're making the money or some of them got lucky and they're in the perfect spot where they can find all the merchandise that they need to find to make the high dollar items work, which is great. The second thing is, do research on the things that you're going to be selling. Are you going to be in a niche? Like, okay, I'm selling only movies, or I'm only selling uh, shirts, or I'm only selling whatever that item is. Sports, goods, whatever. Shoes. Um, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to learn your niche on what sells, what doesn't sell. And then you also want to do a mixture of some stuff that sells fast, because not everything is going to sell fast. And yes, are there going to be some things that sell a little slower? Sure. But that's the other thing, too, is because sometimes you're not going to be able to be out there finding the big stuff. So while you're looking for the big stuff and it meets your qualifications, like, for instance, uh, for me, I've been doing a lot of movies and that's one of the things that I started out with. Well, guess what? It takes a while to sell movies. Are they fast to list? Yes. I'm getting faster and better at the process. But there again, they're also a slower seller. So I have to fill it in with some other stuff. So what do I do? I go out there and do research and I research everything. I find items that have a high sell through rate that have a, that meet my qualifications as far as like what amount of money I'm putting into it versus how much I'm getting out of it and the time frame. <laughs> and you always research not what's listed, but what's sold. And how you get the sell through rate is by taking comparing the stuff that's listed versus what's sold. So if there's a hundred items that are listed and only one is sold, that's pretty poor. And it goes by the last 90 days. If there's only one item and three sold in the last 90 days, then you're got a high sell through rate. Also, you got to take a look at the numbers. Are a lot of them like uh, the ones that sold? Sure, they might have sold a lot of them. If there's 15 of them listed and 20 are sold but what's the price of it is it a dollar two dollars or five dollars or is it like a hundred dollar item that's another thing too you also got to think about your storage how much storage space you have me i got a decent amount because i have a house and yeah there's a lot of traffic on the back road because they're doing construction out here but the point is is you got to think of how much room you have and what you're going to be able to sell if you got stuff that's big and heavy to sell, you got to think about shipping and shipping supplies. That's another thing too. Uh, so you got to think about that. <sighs> what else? So here's an example. Also, too, another one too is in order to get repeat buyers, you have to provide customer service, good customer service. What I mean by that is sometimes you got to take a hit. And what I mean by that is, hey, you know, you got to eat up what, eat up a loss. As an example, uh, this last month I sent the guy what was a sealed package, or no, not sealed, open package. And I know I looked in there, and all three razors were filled with the liquid. Well, come to find out, that's not the case. That he claims. And because he claims that it's not the case, well, guess what? I now had to give him a rebate of $7. Did I want to do that? No. But I did it because it kept him from giving me a bad review. And who knows? Maybe sometime down the road, he's be like, yeah, I remember this guy. And he gave me a rebate. Well, guess what? I'm going to go ahead and buy from him because I know I can trust him. Cool beans. Another way to get a repeat customer is 
I had a customer ask me specifically to take a little bit of time out to look and send them a screenshot of a movie. And so that's exactly what I did. He's like, cool, great. I'm going to have my girlfriend order it. So she ordered it, bought it. I shipped it out right away. They got it. They loved it. And then they asked me, well, what other movies do I have? I said, well, I'll tell you what. Take a look at what I got listed and give me a list of what you got that you want to, uh, that I can take a look for. So he gave me a list. I found a couple of those. And so I did the same thing with those two other movies along with the other eight. I didn't, but... I ended up uh, getting those packaged up, made him a package deal, and got it, and he gave him a good deal, and he purchased it. So guess what? Now he's like, okay, I got, I applied to your store, and I'm going to keep an eye out for any other movies that come along. I'm going to look at them, and if there comes along one that I like, I'm going to go ahead and purchase it. All right, cool. Or who knows, maybe he'll keep an eye out, and he'll find another list of four or five or eight movies and might do it per, once per month or maybe once a couple times every couple months or whatever that's fine by me too because guess what that's repeat business you got people that i know that uh are on youtube uh one of them's been doing it for 20 years but guess what he has a lot of customers that come back for the stuff that he has because they know that he finds the stuff that they're looking for and they're willing to pay for it that's another thing, too, is you don't always have to go racing to the bottom, and I hate that. Like, you'll see movies that will sell for $0.99 cents plus free shipping and stupid stuff like that. It's like, how do you even make a profit off of that? <sighs> Unless you were just trying to get rid of it, but then even then, you're losing money on it. It's like, okay, so you're paying $4.13, and you only got $0.99 cents out of it. But then at the same time, so you lost $3 out of that out of pocket right away. And then on top of that, you're paying eBay fees. It doesn't make any sense to me. But, anyways, so that's another thing, too. Don't worry about going to the bottom of the pile. Put yourself in the middle. Another thing, too, is with the listings, take a look at uh, how the uh, ones that have sold and how they're listed. That'd be another thing, too, to do. You know, how they got it listed. So if it's a movie, I think, you know... One of the best ways to do it is the title, what it is, as a DVD, VHS, uh, Blu-ray. Then you go from there to, you know, sometimes some people put in what, it, what it's rated. Some people put in uh, other stuff, like the date of the manufacturer of it, or when it came out. So let's say the movie came out in 2016, so they put 2016 in there. Then from there, then they add, and this is what I like to do, is then I add the uh, people, the person, the actors. And then once I get towards the end, then I put in new or used or whatever it is for that. And that's an example. Now, you might have an item that's an open box. Well, guess what? You put open box. Or if it's still sealed, then you can put sealed. And then you go through the list. If you got a barcode that you can put onto it, then put, you know, Put the barcode in there. Fill out as much information as you can because especially where it has underneath the listing like where it says uh, uh, languages. And it'll say something like 30,000 or whatever. Well, that's how many people it's prospectively to possibly run through that gets views on it. Or, you know, that's one click away from it. So you go through that, you fill that out as much as possible. And yeah, it takes time, but here's the thing. Learn how to do the listings correctly. So that's another step. So let's see what we got. Inventory, starting from the house. Learning your inventory, learning what sells. And sell-through rate, price point. Yeah, so you got all that stuff there, right? And then with storage, like I said, you got to figure out what you're going to do for storage. So for storage, this is what I like to do. For my DVDs, I got boxes. And those boxes hold a certain amount of DVDs and they fit in there perfectly. And so I put on there whatever the number is. And then I can stick that underneath the, uh, uh, there's a section all the way down at the bottom. And then you can put it in whatever box you have listed and numbered. 
So I got boxes listed B1 through B10 right now for my DVDs. So I know exactly where it's at. Or C1, which is a specific VHS tape. And D is another one, which is the clamshells or the hard cases. Then I got A1 through 11, and that specifically, well, guess what? I got those boxes set up for the other stuff. And then with my shoe rack, I, I think I got that listed as SR1, SR2, and SR3. So shoe rack 1, shoe rack 2, shoe rack 3, so I know exactly where to look. So, uh, that's just simple, simple on there. So, you got that there. So now, while you're, now going back into the listings, and this is what's so important about the shipping, is you got to figure out how you're going to do the shipping. Are you going to ship priority mail? Are you going to ship uh, USPS or USP, USPS? Or are you going to do FedEx? And the key point on that one is, where are you located? Like me, USP, USPS and UPS are close to me. However, USPS, because I don't sell more than a couple items a day, I use the scan code, which saves me time. And also, with boxes, I like to reuse boxes, but here's the key element. Don't be using cereal boxes. Don't be using all this other crazy weird boxes. I mean, it's up to you, really. I mean, when you're getting started. But if you can afford to purchase boxes or get free boxes, or like once you get built big enough and you get your store, then once every three months, take that money and purchase more boxes from either the eBay store or, uh, yeah, from eBay. Or if you do poly mailers, same thing. Or poly mailers. Uh, what else is there? So yeah, you just got to learn how to do that. And then it takes time. And when you're doing the listing, weigh out the stuff. Measure it out to get as close as you possibly can. So that way you know what you have. That way you don't overextend yourself or underestimate. Because if you underestimate... Oh, that can be a big difference too. So if you underestimate, it could cost you a couple extra bucks. And if you overestimate, uh, the customer may or may not purchase from you because you overestimated. And guess what? Your overestimation could cost you an extra couple bucks, like five bucks or whatever. Well, to the customer, maybe the other guy that he would have purchased from you, but the other guy, maybe a dollar more, but in the end, because of the shipping, it's half your shipping. So, that's another thing too, which takes time. So these are just a few things that uh, for new folks to learn. And like I said, as far as using the coupons and stuff to get stuff from eBay, to purchase uh, shipping supplies, you got to have a store first. I don't remember what level store it is. And then, what else is there? So yeah, and as you get started, start learning how to do the listings, listing the item a day, you know, because that way you show activity every day, and build your store slowly. Uh, and then once you get the first week, then maybe list two if you have enough items for that. And then three items per week, or per day rather. And then four items. And if you don't have any items, then you're just going to have to sit and wait until either A, you get more money to be able to purchase more items or find more items, or B, uh, you'll have to wait until it sells. That's how that works. <sighs> so, yeah. Those are just a few ideas and a few things to procure your business. And... Like and subscribe. I know it's about a 15 minute video, but like, subscribe, and uh, comment down below. This is Semper Fi 1918 out.